Hello there, uh, you join me today on a repair video for a Roden Schwartz radio communications test set. Um, this particular test set I bought a while ago and I've had it on my bench for quite some time now and uh, I bought it with a fault on it um, in that the person who owned it before me um, accidentally transmitted high amounts of RF power up the low power um, RF port as well as a high power RF port and there was a fault on the low power RF port which meant that when you fed a fixed level in, a known fixed level it read incorrectly on the display uh, but on the high power port believe it or not it was working fine um, until um, every now and then it sort of goes intermittent when it doesn't read the, the right RF power um, so you could feed for example 20 watts into it on transmit under the TX test and uh, it would uh, read the wrong power level here uh, where it says watts and um, basically it came and went that fault and it's taken me a while to find out what's wrong with it now I picked this test set up really cheap I mean the guy who sold it me let it go at a bargain price because of all these faults um, so I repaired the problem um, on the low power input uh, it doesn't tell you how much RF power that port can take but it isn't much probably up to a watt which is common on most test sets for the low power I think this guy's fed about 30 watts up there and inside the test set in one of these modules um, the coax connects to that module one of the modules and it has a pi or a t-pad attenuator uh, which is made of little chip surface mount resistors um, as like a 20 dB attenuator and then the output of that attenuator is fed off to the relevant modules such as spectrum analyzer, the, the transmit monitor for the transmit frequency counter deviation and, um, and that because they work at very low levels and these resistors are burned out because obviously fed up uh, 30 odd watts or whatever uh, but anyway I've managed to track down this other problem now um, this test set is a lovely little test set um, it's quite unusual um, but basically in the fault that we had the receive signal generator worked perfectly um, and no matter what you did with the receive it was it was always okay never a problem it was only in transmit um, when or in the duplex test uh, where it wouldn't read TX power properly it would read frequency and deviation correctly but not the RF power and I believe I found out what's causing the problem after a lot of uh, hard fault finding with it um, but just to give you a little rundown of this test set um, we've obviously got uh, quite a bit it's a, a fully featured test set is this um, so we've got um, RX test and TX test we've got tones so we can emulate all kinds of different tone systems uh, we've got auto test duplex test spectrum analyzer SSB um, modem testing all sorts of different things so for example we've got a nice spectrum analyzer and that has a tracking generator as well so you can track it was in that um, it's got all kinds of lovely features where you can monitor low level signals from off air on this port uh, in addition to that you've obviously got your transmit test for doing transmitter frequency and deviation um, and also frequency error and you can measure TX power um, and all the parameters and, and the scope there appears as well on the transmit mod receive test again uh, you've got AF measurements you can make in there plus as well you've got your signal generator levels and, and such like as well uh, and then in duplex test obviously if you're transmitting and receiving at the same time then you have a duplex test capability uh, and there's a lot of features on this test set it's um, a little different to drive than most radio test sets I must admit to the Marconi's IFR Aeroflex models which I'll be doing videos on as well as the um, HP Agilent and um, uh, key site test sets all have sort of different ways of working this does take a little bit of getting used to if you're used to Marconi in particular um, 
but it is a nice test set I must admit I'm quite pleased with it um, but anyway back to the fault what we've what we've had um, inside the test set is this module um, which employs a thick film attenuator and what this does uh, the job of this is to attenuate the RF signal coming in from the front socket so basically this socket here which can only take 50 watts incidentally uh, up it that comes into here via this uh, socket on the on the back there the bigger one obviously this heats up with RF power because obviously RF power coming in has to be dissipated in the form of heat which is the reason why it's mounted on a big heat sink uh, and then what we have we have different pads inside different attenuators and uh, we feed out um, a minus 26 dB signal on this port here which is this smaller coax and that's then fed off to the modules inside the, the test instrument uh, and that's at a low level so it doesn't matter how much RF power we stick up here 50 watts whatever we'll always get 26 dB less uh, well to give you an idea for every 3 dBs upwards um, or should I say downwards we half the power so if you're feeding 50 watts in there a 3 dB attenuator will give you 25 watts another 3 will give you 25, um, half of 25 again so on and so forth so the total attenuation between these two ports via this thick film resistor RF power resistor attenuator is 26 dB and so that low level RS fed off to the spectrum analyzer and the TX monitor there Likewise, the um, RF signal from the signal generator is fed in on this socket here and then it goes through what are a multiple relays which you can see soldered here. There's about eight of them in total. And because they're low level signals, they're fed in through surface mount resistors. Again in a T-pad um, as 10 dB, 20, 40, 60 dB, so on and so forth. And so what happens is, is you're going up and down with the control for the signal level um, it switches in different relays in different um, um, uh, configurations to provide a different level of attenuation uh, for zero attenuation it just switches them all in line so this track that you can see there this green track is basically connected right the way through there's again another 26 dB attenuator between here and the RF in so we've effectively got two 26 dB attenuators that split into two. One goes to the transmit side, one goes to the receive. Now the problem is, is that um, there's meant to be, according to the diagram, uh, if we look at that here, this is a block diagram of this module. Um, so we've got RF coming in here. Uh, it then goes through an attenuator and uh, obviously gets fed to another attenuator now how it measures RF power is that there's a diode a Schottky diode RF Schottky diode that's capable of switching well over a gigahertz in frequency and that rectifies the RF voltage um, after the attenuator to produce a DC level and the DC level is directly proportional to the RF signal coming in so that's fed off then to the power measurement uh, circuitry we have another diode that's there for temperature compensation because this gets hot when you're dealing with lots of RF power so this allows temperature compensation for this diode and that again goes to the digital power reading circuit and then what happens is is the signals passed across uh, to another attenuator reduced again in RF level and then it's passed then to that socket that I was showing you which is basically the, the small one there and that's fed off to the transmit sampler which then obviously reads all the frequencies deviations and such like uh, the receive signal okay from the signal generator comes in here uh, which is the port on the end here and then we go through relays and they can switch different pads in so you, if you wanted for example um, say a, a 40 dB pad in the relays are switched in this area to go through it but if you want the 40 dB pad out then the relay switch to this so it can bypass that and then you can have a 30 
a 15 and a seven and a half db and then a 20 and it can it can switch these in different uh, configurations depending on what you're wanting to set on the on the output and then obviously it then goes into um, finally another uh, attenuator before leaving the output so the, the level that's fed in here is quite high level has to take a, account of all the attenuators obviously depending on what you want on the output and then it produces a correct level on the output um, and likewise as well there's a um, a power uh, attenuator a, a 20 db power attenuator that's switched in and out which is is this one this is actually a power attenuator um, because the signal that arrives here is quite high so that has to be on a thick film substrate as well in order for it to uh, attenuate the signal properly whereas these are only surface mount resistors so they can't handle much power RF wise that's why the signal has got to be very low before it gets to the attenuators that are in these pads here that are switched by these relays so if we look at the circuit diagram uh, this is a schematic and what we see here if I can just zoom in this is the thick film resistor area here and so on the left hand side we've got what's labelled up there as X902 that's the RF input port on the front of the test set uh, which is this uh, port there and that then connects through these pads so we've got a 6 dB pad uh, which then obviously goes to the relay there first relay and then we've got a star pad um, system which is all this area and then it goes out then to the TX monitor section uh, this side is the rectifier diode there for the RF power and that's fed off to as a DC level to some more amps and that's the temperature compensation diode and then here we've got on the thick film substrate we've got the 20 dB power attenuator there which has to be mounted on heatsink because that obviously deals with quite a lot of RF power uh, before it's passed to these contacts and then we've obviously got the um, DB pads for each relay which consist of surface mount resistors again now what I found is uh, the fault if at the moment we we just look at the scalar network analyzer we've got according to the diagram a 26 DB uh, attenuation between what is the input and output ports on here and as you can see we're actually reading way over that reading about 36 db attenuation and the frequency response is from 10 megahertz to 1 gigahertz so 10 megahertz is at the far left hand side of the screen and 1 gigahertz is to the far right now what happens is is as you can see the response is curved and it shouldn't be, it should be flat and it also should be 26 db's we're putting a 0 dBm signal in so we should be receiving minus 26 dB now what the fault is that I found which I'm going to show you in a moment is there's actually a, an airline crack um, which is across um, the glass substrate this is a glass substrate there's an airline crack right across here and basically that explains why the receive side works because the receive injection is actually there it comes in there goes through that pad that pad and straight then to the output socket on the front so that explains why the receive side is always okay but if I press my thumb here and we watch the screen I'll just back off of zoom a bit so we can see the whole screen if I press my thumb here you'll see there we've got a 26 dB attenuation, it is 25.5 now which is near as damn it but you can see the response is flat and that's because my thumbnail is actually joining the print up, the track the gold track that's on that the moment I let my thumb off it reverts back so that explains why there's actually a, an attenuation um, which is occurring way above what it needs now of course on this 
the diode that measures the transmit power is actually under this sort of uh, epoxy sort of blob here and um, then that's a temperature compensation diode and basically it's, it's in this section is the um, transmit power diode it's under this sort of uh, epoxy and because it's crack this track that goes from right to left it means this diode can't sample the RF power and likewise the coupled output power to this pin here which goes to the small socket to the transmit monitor that fails to get enough RF for it to work properly the rectifier diode so hence you know it doesn't uh, read the correct power on transmit um, on the test set so that that explains that now I could just zoom out again um, so basically in order for the transmit power to read correctly there it's got to get an RF voltage rectified uh, which then is sampled by the microprocessor to display the right power you calibrate that by adjusting this pot here so you'd feed a known RF leveling of 10 watts say for example uh, on that port and then what you would do then is you would set this potentiometer here to read 10 watts exactly and that's how you calibrate the instrument so I'm going to attempt a repair on it because I think that uh, this part from Roden Schwartz would be quite expensive although I've actually sent off for a, a price for this thick film resistor uh, but I'm going to try and scrape some of this red oxide paint off and there's a gold contact under there which is this sort of square and I'm uh, going to try and see whether I can get it to uh, to connect properly across from right to left it's very difficult to show you on this but basically if I zoom in I might be able to show you uh, what's happening so I'll just put a magnifier on and then we'll go right in on this circuit excuse the uh, picture just for a moment um, so you might be able to see in a moment when I just zoom out a bit you might be able to see if you look at the uh, the uh, black square to the left where the, under the red dye the red paint you can see there's a, an airline crack in it um, I'm just going to see if I can get a better angle just to show you but you can see there's just a it's very difficult with this damn magnifier let's have a look here you can just see it at the bottom left of the picture there that black is is not as defined as it should be and uh, that's because it's um, got a crack in it I'm afraid let's have a look it's almost impossible to see on this um, thing but you can just see a bit of a, a crack in the uh, it's an awful uh, magnifier is this you can just see it there on the left hand side of that black block on the on the left side of the uh, red paint covered area and it actually propagates right the way from the top there all the way through down to there although it's not at all easily seeable on uh, on this particular oh you can just see it there in the white substrate near that gold contact depends where you get it you might just be able to make it out it goes up you can just see a line in the white area just ever so faint there and it's cracked right the way across so yeah that's the problem on this so I'll come back with another video once we've uh, done a repair in linking the track from here to there to see whether that fixes it but there's a, a total crack from there to there so either that's being caused from excessive RF power fed up or it's uh, being physically stressed um, and cracked that way but I, I suspect it's being caused through heat expansion sudden heat expansion through extreme RF power being fed up well above 50 watts as I say the, the front of the test set is only rated at 50 watts maximum 
and I think somebody's obviously fed uh, quite a bit of RF power up it. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I shall come back again with another video when we've uh, tried to repair it. Thank you. Bye bye.